Hello again. Uh, my name is Ian Cyrus. I am a practitioner of acupuncture and oriental medicine. My practice is located in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. And today we're going to talk about what is a working trigger point complex, what it looks like, and a few of the different types of trigger point. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what a dysfunctional end plate is and how that relates to a trigger point complex. First, let me say that most people do not understand that there is a working definition of what a trigger point is. And that is, a trigger point is a hyper irritable zone or nodule in a taut band. And that's important to understand that it's a taut band that can affect dysfunction, neurologic phenomenon, and other pilomotor responses. Referred pain as well. Okay? Now, this definition of a trigger point is key in understanding what this means. Also, there are different types of trigger points. There is central trigger points, terminal trigger points, key trigger points, associate trigger points, satellite trigger points, inactive trigger points, all with very distinct behaviors, okay? So it's important to get that. Today we're only going to talk about two of them or three of them so that you get a sense for why, you know, this appears in the literature, okay? So here we go. Okay, what we're looking at here is a working um, trigger point complex, a working model. So you have, again, two bones. You have a muscle stretch between the two bones. And then in the center, you have what's known as a trigger point, which can also be consistent with a motor point. But at any rate, an expanded view of this is right here. And if you look at this, you will see this is can be considered normal myofilaments. Now if you look at the one below, you will see contractile knots in the myofilaments. And you can see on either side of these knots and in the middle where the myofilaments are disrupted. In other words, they are failed contractile elements. Here's another example of what that looks like. This is another normal, you know, um, uh, muscle fiber and then here you have again failed contractile elements. Now these knots it's important to note that those of us who do trigger point work we take a needle and we stick it in this central trigger point and the needle just moves up and down and that's it. Only to learn a week later when your patient comes in that the trigger point has returned. And that's because of these contractile knots. Now, when you insert a needle, you have to fan the needle in about eight directions, use a, the eight points of a compass, and you clean up the contraction knots within the trigger point complex, okay? Otherwise, like I said, it will return. Also, um, there is this differences in whether you elicit one twitch response out of this, the muscle fasciculates or twitches, it's an LTR or local twitch response, or whether you keep going till the muscle doesn't twitch anymore. In other words, you exhaust the muscle, right? And there's a fallout from that, but we'll talk about that at another time. So it's important to note that that's why you will have to fan the, the needle in eight directions so that you clean up these knots. Otherwise, they will come back. And the reason they come back is because of the muscle spindles. Now, muscle spindles are ba basically highly specialized cells within the muscle system. And there's intrafusal and extrafusal cells. Well, basically, that's the memory of the muscle. So you have to re-educate this memory to behave differently 
and that may require sometimes exhausting the muscle with repeated twitches until it doesn't twitch anymore so that it doesn't return back to its contracted state. Okay, now over here we have uh, over here we have it, what's known as a dysfunctional right here, a dysfunctional end plate region. This relates to how this behaves. So you have a um, trauma to the muscle and then you have an autonomic nerve that's let's say it's damaged because of stretch and I'll get to that in a second. This is the motor end plate, okay? There's a release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft or the end plate region. And what happens is that de there's depolarization of the muscle fibers. That leads to an increased energy demand right here. But what happens is that this depolarization leads to a flood of A flood of um, yeah, my uh, <laughs> pointer doesn't seem to be working too good. Okay, there's a flood of ionized calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum that is released. Now, what that does, it it causes a contraction of the sarcomere or the muscle fiber. That leads to compression, this contraction leads to compression of the blood vessels and it also puts a traction effect on the nerves which is up here and that causes pain. That's known as a neuropathic pain cycle. So when that contraction occurs and ionized calcium keeps being flooded into the space, this shuts down. In other words, you have no peripheral blood supply and other substances you know it, it chokes off so you have a decreased energy supply and an increased energy demand and what happens this keeps this is like a vicious cycle it leads to um, an energy crisis and this energy crisis then leads to nociceptive fiber irritation and the problem just keeps going the interesting thing about this is when you take an acupuncture needle and you insert it into the central trigger point, for an example, what happens is that it causes this whole thing to change. It restores the local energy problem, and then you have increased blood flow, increased nutrient delivery, um, lymphatic drainage and what have you. So it's important to understand the relationship of this to this. That's why as people who, you know, for, we do acupuncture, you know, we don't realize that, that when we insert a needle, you know, all of this is going on provided that, that you have established that this is a, um, a quote unquote, a myofascial trigger point. So how does a myofascial trigger point uh, compare with a motor point, compare with an Asher point, or any other type of points for that matter, often there is uh, overlap, okay? But there is a proper way of evaluating what a trigger point is. And again, one of the major things about a trigger point is that when you, when you palpate it cross fiber, there is a local twitch response, a transient or local twitch response. Often that twitch response uh, what follows is, is a recreation of the symptoms, be it referred pain or, or extreme pain or, or any one of those types of uh, sensation. You can have pilomotor responses like goose bumping, uh, the area in question you, you, can, you can observe uh, dermatomal hair loss and, and what have you. So uh, I hope that this idea of a trigger point complex and, and the um, dysfunctional end plate that occurs when there is a trigger point, I hope that, that it's been helpful in, in explaining what that is. Also, if you look at this, there is a trigger point in the tendon, and then there's a trigger point in the middle. This is a central trigger point, and that's the terminology. This is a terminal trigger point. 
often practitioners would insert a needle into a trigger point in the belly of the muscle and forget about its terminal attachments. Well, trigger points can happen anywhere between the attachments, anywhere. Whereas a motor point is usually found in the belly of the muscle. But we'll get to what a motor point is at, at another time. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me, Ian Cyrus, at the Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine Center in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. My email address is uh, ian.cyrus at gmail.com. Website address is eastasianmed.com. And that's it. Okay. Thank you for listening.